Right, the economic impact of the coronavirus is still impossible to determine, but it is widely clear that the outbreak is taking a toll on the Chinese economy. Before the virus came to light, China had declared that the DOP would grow at 7.5% this year. Now reports suggest that China's growth rate could drop to 2%, 2% points uh, this quarter because of the outbreak. The GDP is now expected to expand by 4%. That is the slowest since China has started publishing figures. A decline on the scale could mean $62 billion in lost growth. Share prices in mainland China have fallen by 10% since January 20th. Companies around the world have warned that the virus in China could disrupt supply chains or hurt bottom line uh, production as factories and shops shut and airlines suspend flights. Factories and offices have already shut for the New Year holiday. They were supposed to reopen in the recent days, but now the future seems uncertain. The tech giant Apple has also temporarily shut down all its suppliers, factories, supply factories in Wuhan. The facilities are scheduled to open only after mid-February, and Apple has also lost production from suppliers in Wuhan. H&M has also said in an official statement that the closure of 45 stores in China has hurt its sales in January. McDonald's, which has shut down over 3,000 stores in China, has said its profits have been impacted. Macau, the world's biggest gambling hub, has suspended all its casino operators for two weeks to help curb the new coronavirus. This comes after Macau recorded 10 cases of patients infected by the virus. Residents have also been instructed to wear masks when traveling around the city and advised to stay home as much as possible. And while well, is reporting from Ground Zero as our correspondent Patrick Falk brings us the latest from Beijing. It's probably still too early to say what exactly the economic damage is going to be. We don't know at this point just how lethal the virus is and how long all this is going to last. But, you know, one prediction from the Economist Intelligence Unit has said that they think that the virus will come under control by the end of March. Uh, that's based on comparisons with the 2003 SARS outbreak. And it's also suggesting that it might mean uh, that China shaves off around uh, somewhere between half a percent to one and a half percent of its uh, GDP. So that is uh, an indication of where it may uh, be headed from an economic perspective. We're already seeing damage to sectors like travel and tourism, the luxury sector, and uh, of course oil, market, oil prices have plunged dramatically as well. The other major bit of news really is how this is going to potentially affect supply chains. You mentioned Apple there, there may be an impact on Apple supply chains, but Hyundai, the Korean car maker, has also announced that it's going to temporarily shut down its factories. So, you know, this, this is something that's going to affect people uh, economically in a lot of different ways. Of course, people not being able to travel around and do business, that's uh, something that's very difficult. But a lot of small businesses in particular are being affected. Retailers and anything uh, to do that, you know, to, to do with consumables, that's all being hit hard. Some of the small business owners I've been speaking to here are worried that, you know, they're not getting any business at all at the moment. So they're still paying for a lot of overheads, paying rent. And the government has actually asked people, landlords here specifically, to uh, ease up on their tenants, uh, particularly if they're running businesses. So perhaps that will help alleviate the situation. But as I say, there's still a lot of uncertainty about what impact this is going to have exactly. They've been going to extreme lengths to try and quarantine people. The latest we've been hearing is they've gone as far as locking people in Inside their homes to make sure that they uh, don't come out in Wuhan City. Some people that are showing uh, symptoms. There are also examples, video circulating, of people being held down and being sprayed with disinfectant if they're not wearing masks out in public. That's how seriously they're they're taking it, and it certainly uh, raises some questions about human rights, uh, perhaps. But this is a uh, an exceptional circumstance, and perhaps uh, exceptional. Uh, things need to be done like that. The hospitals that are being purpose-built uh, to house coronavirus patients uh, are now accepting patients. The first one 
uh, began accepting patients yesterday. The second one is meant to be complete today, and it's been run entirely by uh, military medics, 1,400 of them. And the military's also taken over delivering supplies to uh, Hubei province. Of course, a lot of the roads have been uh, blockaded, and, uh, and people aren't being allowed to drive as they please on highways and so on and so forth. So that's all under control by the military right now. But, you know, the, the figures are very worrying indeed. We're up to over 24,000 confirmed cases and 492 deaths, as you, as you say. But there's an indication that the numbers could be far higher than that still, certainly the number of infections, because right now what we're hearing is they don't even have enough kits to, to test people uh, to see whether or not they've actually contracted the virus. So uh, that number could be much, much higher. We could be looking at some of the figures that experts in Hong Kong have predicted, somewhere between 35,000, maybe up to 75,000.